In this video, I'm going to talk about the parts of the personality or the structure of personality according to Sigmund Freud within his psychoanalytic, psycho, psychoanalytic theory of personality or the psychoanalytic or psychodynamic perspective. All right, so personality according to Freud, it was structured into three separate parts. One part is called the id. This is the earliest part of the personality. And this part is kind of animalistic in nature. These are those drives to do things that perhaps would, could be considered socially unacceptable, like things like aggression, sexual urges, desire for food, things like that too. And so this is present at birth. So you have your id with you from birth and it tries to satisfy basic drives and survival instincts. Like, hey, I'm hungry, I wanna eat. I have sexual desire. I wanna satisfy those sexual desires. I'm angry, I, I want violence. Things like that are things that are associated with the id. Now, the id, according to Freud, the id operates according to the pleasure principle. If it feels good, I want it. That's your basic, very short summary of the pleasure principle. And that's the process by which the id seeks immediate, I want it now, immediate gratification and pays no attention to societal expectations or constraints. So think of an infant. Infant's got to poop, it just poops. You know, if it says if you haven't covered them in a diaper, they're just going to let it out and they're not going to care that they made a big mess. Infant gets mad, they're going to throw some stuff around. They don't care if that's socially unacceptable. They are... So an infant is pure id. Just does whatever it wants. No societal constraints whatsoever. Wild little animalistic infant and toddler. Now, over time though, you start to develop the second component of the personality. And that is known as the ego. Uh, ego, anytime you see the word ego in, you know, talking about psychology or related topics, typically that means self. Ego means self. If somebody is egocentric, they're centered on their self. If you were trying to talk about, the, you know, something as being egoistic or having to do with the ego, it has to do with the self. All right, so the ego, what's that all about? The ego starts to internalize societal rules, practical uh, restrictions on what you can do. You can't just do whatever you want all the time like the id wants you to do. Sometimes you have to not make a mess, not lash out. You know, sometimes you have to inhibit those id impulses. And so this component represents the rational, the rational part of the mind and it operates according to a different principle. So the id had the pleasure principle, the ego operates according to the reality principle. What can we actually do in this situation? What is practical? What is possible? So the ego attempts to achieve the id's goals. It tries to satisfy the, the id as well as it can, but the actions, uh, the, the, the actions have to work in a given situation and through actions or activities that are pleasurable rather than painful. All right, so the ego, it's got the, re it operates according to the reality principle. And then more time passes and you develop the third component. And I'm gonna say a little bit more about exactly when this shows up, but let's just introduce it here. Let's introduce the structure first. That third component is called the superego. It literally means above the ego, above the self. What's the superego? This is kind of your, your conscience. Now, not before we said conscious, like you're aware of it. This is conscience, or as one of my classmates used to say in college to try to help him remember, con-science. If that works for you, try to remember it that way. But you know, your conscience, your feelings of things like guilt, like, oh, I shouldn't do that. That's bad for me to do that. If you're familiar with Pinocchio, Pinocchio had that cricket, Jiminy Cricket, who would uh, tell him like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. He was acting as his conscience. He was acting as the superego would. Uh, and so this considers societal constraints and acceptable forms of behavior. And the, the superego is shaped by experience 
like you have to learn from others like well, what is considered good what is considered bad you know learning from things like religion your parents religion uh social social norms social rules things like that but the ego is what gives you those feelings of guilt shame the idea of what should you do all right do you think that all parts of the, the personality might get along how do you think the id would get along with the super ego they they wouldn't get along the id and the super ego often want very different things you know the id may be screaming you know i'm done with this i'm bored with this class leave now and the super ego is like no we can't miss class we should not skip class it's wrong to skip class and the thing is the ego is often stuck in the middle the ego is kind of like the moderator that has to satisfy both the id and the superego, given the situation, given the reality, given what's practical. All right, that's your basic component of the personality. We're going to talk more about psychodynamic, uh, psychoanalytic or psychodynamic perspectives next video.